Hey there, Safe Crackers! Get your combinations ready because it's time for the Comic Vault! A vault full of comics for everybody. That's right, and today we're talking about something in particular. I'm not sure what that's going to be. Maybe I should look around for some inspiration. Well, I guess I have my answer. So I'm kind of a Rocketeer fan. I love the Rocketeer. Now, I feel like there's a lot of people who uh, love Dave Stevens, and by extension, the Rocketeer. But, uh, and, you know, I like Dave uh, Staves a lot. I really like Dave Staves. Uh, I really like Dave Stevens, but the thing that I always really kind of latched onto was, was the Rocketeer. I mean, Dave Stevens largely being known for drawing uh, the female form, and he's, gr he, well, he, he was great at it. He, he, he did lots of lovely, wonderful art. And uh, that was one of the amazing draws of the Rocketeer, is that uh, it was this very slick, interesting art. And uh, the story being reminiscent of something that was uh, uh, of a bygone era. And I really, really enjoyed that idea that it so uh, perfectly encapsulated this bygone era. Now, the spirit, because today we're talking about IDW's new issue, the Rocketeer, the spirit, it doesn't say and, it's just, the ro well, it does on the cover, but on the inside, on the publication information, it doesn't say and, so the Rocketeer slash the spirit pulp friction. That's right, not fiction, friction because there's friction between the two of them. Now, this issue, uh, IDW and DC teamed up to do this because, of course, uh, DC has the ability to print the spirit at the moment. So, uh, <clears throat> what I really liked about this particular issue is that uh, there is a sense of humor that runs through this issue that makes a lot of sense. It, it feels like it belongs in, in a pulp something. It feels like it belongs in an old movie serial, which is great. It's exactly what it needs. Now, that being said, uh, Mark Wade's writing this, and Paul Smith's drawing. And, uh, I kind of feel that the the ones that have come before this, uh, Mark Wade did, I believe, The Cargo of Doom. I could be wrong about that. But uh, he did one of the other ones. I forget. Moving on, uh, there's, there have been a few Rocketeer things that have been published independently of Dave Stevens at this point. There has been Cargo of Doom, there has been the Hollywood Horror, and uh, Jay Bone, I think, is the, uh, the artist's name, something to that effect. But uh, the artist, while interesting and good, and he brought something to the story that... Uh, uh, that was worthwhile. It wasn't the photorealistic, really slick-looking Rocketeer that I was used to. It wasn't this. It was it was a little more cartoony. It was a little more uh, Looney Tunes, and that's not fair. That's not completely fair. I mean, uh, he he didn't try to do just wacky, over-the-top stuff. It just wasn't photorealistic. It wasn't what I was used to. Now, Paul Smith, on the other hand. Paul Smith, I believe. Yes, Paul Smith, on the other hand, is really bringing this kind of photorealistic art to the Rocketeer. So we're 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 approaching this again. We're getting back to the roots of the Rocketeer. Now that being said, I think the reason they're doing it is because the spirit's involved. I feel like uh, they they're putting this style of art with the spirit, not necessarily the Rocketeer, but I'll tell you what, I think the Rocketeer deserves it. I think this is where the Rocketeer belongs, and uh, I really, really enjoy what they're, what they're doing with the art. Everybody looks slick. It's really good. Now, let's move on to the story. Essentially, what happens in the story is that they're, the spirit is given a reason to go to L.A. As, as the spirit says, it's, it's spelled out, E L L A, which is funny to me. That uh, let's see here, the L A or the L A P D E L L A Y P E E D E E. It's there's this kind of uh, text and and oh, I suppose it's contextual humor, but this also text humor that that cracks me up. That uh, that really finds its home here, and the the spirit has, at least for a while, I never really read The Spirit. It wasn't something that I've really exposed myself to, which would, uh, 
Seems a little contrary to my, my typical MO. You would think that I would go back and look into the spirit stuff. But uh, I just haven't. I watched the movie and didn't care for the movie, and that's not even close to good enough to make up my mind. And I know that. All I'm saying is I have seen the movie, and now having seen the movie, we're at least uh, in the vein of trying to look at the, the spirit as uh, this kind of engine for humor. Now, uh, uh, based on having seen that movie, this generation tends to think of the, the spirit as, a gener as an engine for humor. But not necessarily that it wasn't that, but that people didn't want to take it seriously. This gets the best of both worlds. This is clever, and uh, they'll, they'll, do, they'll make these jokes that kind of belong in something that's pulp, like uh, uh, the spirit stepping into a car, and then he makes some kind of comment about uh, it effectively being a rocket, and then they show the Rocketeer picking up his rocket. Now, uh, the spirit's not aware of who the Rocketeer is, let alone that he's Cliff Secord, let alone that he has arrived at the same airport that the Rocketeer is at, and, the, and that the Rocketeer is going to go try to chase him down because he looks like a bandit. He's wearing a mask and a hat and a, you know, a suit. He looks like a gangster. So, so the Rocketeer goes to chase him down. Now, he doesn't know this is about to happen, and that's why it's so amusing that he makes that reference. Like, this car's a rocket. Well, little do you know, an actual rocket's coming at you. So, it's, it's stuff like that that just holds you all the way through. And uh, some of these characters are, are just... I feel like Mark Wade is really settling into the role of writing the Rocketeer, and he's understanding that uh, that characters don't have to be obnoxious. Now, uh, the last panel, Betty, almost said Betty Page, <laughs> the Rocketeer's girlfriend, Betty, uh, does the whole obnoxious "let's make uh, Cliff Secord jealous" thing, which it seems to be is a trope that we cannot get away from in uh, in the Rocketeer stuff. It kind of drives me nuts that she has to be such a cold fish to uh, to Cliff Secor. Now she does it because she loves him and she wants to get a rise out of him, but uh, it's not good enough. I don't know. I feel like that's too easy. It's too easy for writing. But uh, so she tries to make him jealous at the end, and that's essentially or at the end of this first issue. And that's going to be a big thing throughout the series. I'm almost certain of it because uh, Betty's going to throw herself at the spirit more and more, going to make uh, his girlfriend, or presumably girlfriend, uh, the, the interest of, of the spirit, going to try to make him jealous throughout the rest of the series, or make, uh, make her jealous throughout the rest of the series, at the same time as making Cliff Secord jealous, and it's, it's, not, it's not compelling to me anymore. I, I've seen it so many times, I kind of want to see Betty as a, a person who's strong and interesting, and not just a flirt, and not just trying to be uh, kind of cruel to Cliff for the sake of it. Uh, I don't think that's interesting. I don't think that's... Uh, uh, I suppose you can make her redeemable even despite that, but I don't think it's sympathetic. Now, at the beginning of this issue, they, uh, they have an alderman in Central City where the spirit lives uh, saying that... Uh, and it's really interesting to me how they're using uh, radio and television, or, or at least uh, the, the coming of television at this point, where, where this alderman is saying, uh, you cannot privatize radio. And television is the next wave of the future. You cannot privatize these public uh, tax-supported forums. These, these things are things that uh, should not be just given to companies. Why? Because they'll manipulate the public. And uh, so I feel like it's, it's really interesting to me that uh, we have always looked at our technology as being... Uh, as, and, it, and of course it has. We've always looked at our technology as affecting the time period that we're in. So a lot of the time people will go back and write period pieces and ignore that technology even exists. They ignore that there is something that's kind of the cutting edge of the time, uh, of what's really influencing people. So, uh, you know, at, at some point it's the printing press, at some point it's the radio, at some point it's the television, at some point it's this medical technology that becomes amazing. So, and I'm not saying that's all in here, I'm just saying as time goes by, we have these advancements. The automobile, these things change, and they're new at some point, and they're, they become popular and household at some point. So essentially what they're saying is, uh, we have this mass media, and let's use it. And uh, that's what I'm applauding uh, uh, the creative team for, is that they are using this mass media, uh, the radio. And they're, they're talking about it like it's something that's so important. And 
it's I feel like a lot of the time writers uh, or, and even the audience get jaded they don't look back and realize that these things are as big as they are so Wade is using it and that pleases me pleases me so so deeply that uh, and it also gives us kind of a baseline one of the things that the Rocketeer has always been uh, uh, not necessarily fighting against but has always been kind of a theme in the Rocketeer is this uh, this anachronistic Super science, and you know we. And I, when I say anachronistic, I mean uh, now we have a small one-person flying device that's, of course, not as uh, uh, effective as the Rocketeer's jetpack. But we do have a one-man flying machine. That is something that exists now. So stuff that exists at this moment, existing back in the uh, uh, the forties, I believe this said 1941. Yep, <laughs> and. and I find this really interesting. Uh, that's that's what the, the one of the things that the Rocketeers always fought against is this kind of super science in that time period. That's really interesting to me. It's also just a little steampunky. I don't know, but uh, I kind of like it. So <laughs> obviously, but uh, <clears throat> so essentially, what happens here is that there's this alderman who's talking about uh, about how the government is allowing for misuse of the radio and he's I'm going I'm going to the mayor the governor the president you guys are not doing what you ought to be doing and uh, that man ends up dead within the first couple pages so uh, but he his body has been <clears throat> his body has been dropped off in California where the rocketeer is so the spirit and the commissioner Dolan and Dolan's daughter Ellen ie the love interest uh, go to uh, go to Hollywood land -ha! and uh, they go and they they arrive at the Rocketeers airport because of course uh, for those of you who don't know the Rocketeer is a uh, is a test pilot or maybe a stunt pilot rather that's what I mean so they work at this airport this little airfield and uh, it's they arrive and and what's interesting to me is that all of these characters say things that are charming and interesting and funny and uh, but it's not so over the it's not words put into a person's mouth and that's what I feel like we've been missing with these Rocketeer uh, IDW Rocketeer things with Rocketeer Adventures with uh, the Cargo of Doom with Hollywood Horror we we have not gotten what it needs to be I feel like this is a terrific exercise I feel like putting the spirit in this book has uh, given Mark Wade the appropriate uh, uh, formula to write the Rocketeer and uh, since they've been regularly producing Rocketeer stuff not monthly but they have been producing more and more uh, I feel like this is perfect now there's a, a particular line in here that's uh, not the best line in, of the whole book I mean well maybe it is uh, of, of this whole issue I really enjoy it but uh, the thing about it is is that uh, it doesn't necessarily affect plot is what I'm trying to say I just think it's a great line uh, here's what it is Commissioner Dolan steps out of the plane and uh, the the spirit said okay okay here we go the spirit says uh, I haven't been he steps out of the plane and he's like oh man my back is stiff I haven't been this stiff since I since they buried me that takes this kind of a flippant approach to death which is something that uh, is necessary in the spirit and I feel like that's a welcome through line here uh, no not that's not not a through line but this is a welcome uh, tone and uh, so Dolan steps out Commissioner Dolan steps out and says ah oh, my back I'm never flying across the country again no sir you hear that Ellen we live here now that's really funny to me that uh, and it's not necessarily uproariously funny but it shouldn't be it should be this kind of dry wit it should be you hear that Ellen we live here now because it's not it's not just that I'm never flying across the country again it's I'm never flying across the country again I'm not even going back we live here now. I think that's so that's so charming and quirky and fun and it makes these people interesting. Now, and at this point, uh, Commissioner Dolan, Police Commissioner Do Dolan, does not even know how to drive a car. So uh, at some point he says, now where's the where's the brake on this thing? And uh, these these characters, okay, so essentially I've brought you to the big moment where uh, 
the Rocketeer and the Spirit have the obligatory fight. They get it out of the way in the first issue. It's not this thing that carries on throughout the whole series, or at least it shouldn't be, uh, because they've largely resolved their issues before before the book even ends. So that's not the climax. It's not, oh, we shouldn't be fighting? Well, issue number two, this one, uh, they, they meet and they their characters do something that makes sense. The obligatory fight scene is, uh, is diegetic. It makes sense. It's organic. The, the characters, the Rocketeer hears that these people are looking for Betty, and not only does he hear that these people are looking for Betty, he hears that this guy who looks like a gangster is looking for Betty because uh, Betty's the one who finds the dead body of the alderman who was uh, disposed of in California. Now, we don't know as to exactly as to why they're being. Uh, we are introduced to a couple villains that uh, we'll find out more about, and uh, maybe they're big villains in these two mythoses, but uh, the name didn't ring a bell. Oh well. But, uh, so we have these you know, one unnamed villain, one named villain. I wonder if maybe I can find the page very quickly. I kind of doubt it based on the fact that I has yet to find it. Hooray. Okay. Uh, Benedict Trask is the name of one of the villains that we have here. So uh, these guys are the bad guys, and we don't know much about them yet. We don't know what their end game is. We don't know why they're doing what they're doing, other than just trying to send a message to to the heroes. Don't, you know, don't mess with us. Now, the obligatory fight makes sense because these characters meet and uh, they make decisions that they typically make. Uh, Secord has always been kind of a rash guy, and uh, the spirit, to my understanding, is kind of a you know fight first, ask questions later type of guy. So I thought this was really interesting, and it made sense, which is what the big thing that I always complain about with uh, superhero team ups. And uh, this one, it's kind of like, yes, we know that's obligatory. Let's get out of the way. Uh, so it's it's an interesting first issue. Uh, I guess my bottom line is the art is beautiful. And, uh, oh, also, the panel transitions. There's, there's these interesting circular panel transitions that almost make it feel like the eye of a camera. And uh, it really makes me feel like, uh, or it really, I feel like this is really reminiscent of an older way of doing things. And I just, I love these these panels. I love the panel layouts. Uh, sometimes it's simple, uh, sometimes it's interesting. Now, that being said, I think that's really all I have to say about it. I'm a big Rocketeer fan, and I'm kind of excited for this series, because I think this might be the uh, post-Dave Stevens Rocketeer that we need. I think that this could be something truly interesting. Uh, not just kind of, uh, let's wet your whistle of Rocketeer stuff, which I feel like is what we've gotten before. So, this is good. Guys, I highly recommend this issue, and uh, I'm excited to see where, where uh, the rest of the series goes. So, thanks for watching the Comic Vault. We'll catch you next time. Peace.